In this clip, we're going to learn how to pass cell values through as SQL parameters in a query and be able to refresh the data within Excel. Here's a quick example. So I'm going to flip over to 4-1-2009. And we'll be able to hit refresh. And as you can see, column C will then populate with our new data. So to do this, I have a SQL query that I have set up. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing these date parameters. So we'll have the ability within our Excel spreadsheet to change two cells with a start and end date. And then we'll be able to refresh and have the data populate for that specific time frame. So let's hop back over to Excel. We'll go to our data tab, select get data, and then from database, and we'll select SQL Server database. So I'll plug in my server, plug in the database, and then I'll hit this drop down for the advanced options, and this is where I'll paste my SQL query. I find it easier to paste your query in with your parameters already built in. So write your SQL code and include your parameters and then just include some dummy values to start with and we'll be able to change those in the future. So we're now looking at the data preview here so we can either load, transform, or cancel. So I'm going to load this for now and we'll, we're going to come back and edit in the future. So I have my table loaded. So I'm going to create my two parameters. We're going to do a start date and end date. The next step you're going to want to do is create a unique table for each of your parameters. So I'm going to create a separate sheet. We'll call this parameters. You're going to want to create a unique table for each parameter. So we'll do one for start and one for end. So I, I created those, those two column headers. What I'm going to now do is insert a table. So I'm going to go to the, the, the insert tab, tables, select the table. My, my table has headers. Once again, insert tables table. Look at this checkbox here, or this pop up. My table has headers, okay. From here now, we're gonna plug in a calculation that just references back to that cell. So I'm just gonna plug in equals, and then come up and select this. So now that we have our parameters in place with our separate tables, we're gonna load these into Power Query. To load these into Power Query, what we'll do is navigate to our data tab, and then we're going to go to the from table slash range. Once you do this, it's going to load Power Query. So as you can see here, we have our start date. So I'm just going to rename this as start. The other thing you'll have to do here is instead of this being a table, we want this to be just one value. So what we'll do is we'll click on our value, and then we'll right click and select drill down. As you can see, this is going to remove the table and actually have it as just a single value. So now we'll do the same for our end date. So I'm going to go back to home, close and load to. And with this being a parameter, we don't actually need to reload a new table. We'll just create a connection. So now we have our start parameter. We're just going to do the same thing with our end. So once again, I'll select the table itself, go to the data tab. And then up in the top left area, there's a from table range. Select that again. Once again, we'll rename our table as end. This is our end date. We'll come into the cell, select our value, right click and drill down. So we now have our start date and end date. Now we have the ability to use the start and end date within our query. So what we'll do is we're going to come back to our query and we're going to hit this drop down menu. And as you can see, we're looking at the formula bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to my where statement where I have my where sales date between 1-1-29-2009 and 1-15-2009. And this is where I'm going to insert my parameter. So to do this, what we're going to then do now is we're just going to be removing our value. So we'll delete that. And then to insert a parameter, we're going to use double quote ampersand. And now we can type our parameter, so we're going to use the start. And then once again, another ampersand, double quote, to include keep the text. And then all we have to do now is just come down to our other parameter for our end and do the same thing. So remove the value, double quote, ampersand. Type in your, your other parameter table. Once again, another ampersand, double quotes to close this off. Just come to the end and hit enter. 
can just click out of it. So we're receiving an error where it says we cannot apply operator to types text and date. So what this is pretty much telling us is that it's trying to put a date in here instead of being a text value to actually execute the query. So we just need to make sure that we're not using a date date type. We need to use a text date type for these two values, our parameters. So we want our parameters to be text. So we're going to just flip back over to the start and end date. And we're going to come over to our query settings. And from here, we have the original source, which is just our Excel value from our Excel table that we created. We then have this change type where it changes it from the start date to a date. So we just want to remove that to leave it as text. So we're just going to remove this step and delete this step. And as you can see, that changed it to a uh, text visual over here. So we're going to do the same with the end date. So just remove this step where it changes it from, changes the value to a date. All right, now we'll come back to our query. And this, this is a different message, so this is good. So we'll hit edit permission. This is saying, do you want this native query to be ran? This is just saying something in the query changed. Do you want us to still run this? Do you think it's still safe to run? And we're changing these dates, so it's gonna, it's gonna give us this flag every time. So what we can do is we'll run this for now. What you'll probably want to do though is come up to File, Options and Settings, and go to your Query Options. From here, you'll go to Privacy. So we want to make sure that this privacy setting is set to always ignore privacy level settings. What this is going to allow us to do is use the values within our parameters within the actual query itself. The privacy level settings is all about the combining of different data tables you have in Power Query. So if we turn this off, it's going to allow us to intermingle the data between our queries. So this is one of the checkboxes you're going to look for. The other one is going to be security. And you're going to uncheck this require user approval for new native database queries. Because every time you're going to be changing those parameters, it's going to be something new. So we'll just turn that setting off to allow for those to run. So that's all, all we have to do. Now we're just going to hit close and load again. And we're going to come back to our query. And now from here, we'll be able to change these dates. So let's just plug in just to visually see this real quick. So now our sales date field should just be February, February 1st to February 2nd. So I'm going to refresh this. And as you can see, we're only getting those values. So one way to enhance this a little bit extra would be to add a refresh button. So to do this, we can come to our developer tab. We can select insert and then select our button from the top left. So now we're going to be creating a new macro. So we'll just hit new. What we can actually do now is just type in a, a little piece of code that will refresh all your queries within your workbook. So to do that, we'll just type in active workbook dot refresh all. One thing to reference here is the button name. So this is button one click. You could rename this. Make sure you don't use spaces. So we'll call it refresh. And then now we just assign the macro to our refresh button. Right click, we'll edit our text here and call this refresh. Now we'll change those values one more time. We'll push our refresh button. And as you can see, the data updates. So this is a very important concept and can be applied to very detailed SQL queries. One major thing about this is if you apply the parameters before the SQL query runs, it's only going to load the data from the query. So doing this is going to be a big improvement compared to adding filters to Power Query once the data is fully loaded. Because what that does is it does, it does a full data load and then applies the filters. So if you can actually apply your filters dynamically to the SQL query before it executes, you'll have much faster response times and it's going to be easier to load on the server.